You gotta take your brakes off first, though. <laughs> oh, I'm stupid. What's up guys? So today I'm gonna start building the rear in the car. Uh, I'm doing 373s, I'm gonna weld the diff. That's really about it, I guess. I'm gonna weld the tubes and make it look good. How much to it? Here's the rear. I'm about to drain it since I didn't do that yet. I haven't had this diff opened since, I don't even remember if it was the first event that I did in this car or if it was after that, because I blew the rear, the old rear that was in the car. This is actually for a Fox body because it's all I can find. It's actually shorter than it should be, but oh, I can smell it. Oh, I hate gear oil, it's disgusting. Ah, oh, it stinks. So it's probably been about two years that this fluid is in here, used and abused. Probably find something to hold the pinion off of it. Could be those three fucking jack stands right there in front of me. I'm dumb. I removed the jack stand from the 350Z because I didn't think there were any, and there was three right in front of my stupid face. For anyone that's never done a dip before, you want to take all the bolts at the bottom out and leave the ones in the top in but loose so you could kind of pry the diff cover. Oh wow, the fluid looks really good. Wow. So you pry the diff cover, otherwise you're gonna have a really big mess. You really wanna mess with this stuff. It's very heavy weight oil. It stinks like rotten chicken. Like you get it in your nose and that's it. Oh. And this has friction modifier in it, and that smells terrible. I don't know if I'm overreacting. I literally do not care for gear oil at all. It stinks. Now this um, this rear end actually has a paper gasket, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use RTV and just make my own gasket for it. Uh -huh. Wow, this one has a gasket. That's nice. I must have put one back on it or something. That's cool, I guess. Yeah, so this has a posi in it, but I'm gonna weld it. So, what I need to do, there's a little set screw somewhere. There it is. So over here, there's a little uh, bolt that goes through. It holds the center pin, an eight millimeter. It is Loctited in with red Loctite, so you need to make sure that it goes back in as well. A lot of people recommend getting a new bolt. You don't have to. Uh, it's not exactly a torque to yield bolt, so you could keep it. The only reason this is a brand new bolt because uh, the reason my diff blew up was because the center pin somehow broke and then it just like flopped around in there and destroyed everything. <laughs> not, not exactly, don't exactly know how that happened or why that happened, but it happened, so. Okay, and then you're gonna get your center pin pushed out through the back, and there it is, center pin's out. Okay, so then you could take, oh uh, fuck. You gotta take your brakes off first though. <laughs> oh, I'm stupid, okay. Um, yeah, so give me a minute and I'm gonna take those off. You should have the brakes off, that should be the first thing. <laughs> but, if you push your axles in, once you get that center pin out, Push your axles in and you can see your C-clips. So they're gonna be inside this S-clip here and you gotta get yourself a magnet to pull them out. So you're just pushing your axles. Sometimes they could be buggers, I guess. The C-clip fell out, so let's get that there. And push your other side. And the same thing. Normally you do this with a magnet, but my magnet doesn't fit. Okay, so then now all you do is get yourself a rag and pull the axle out. Pull the axle, but you want to pull it as smooth and in the center as possible so you don't ruin the seals inside there. And then same thing. Give it a little pull. Comes right out. Okay. 
Okay, and there we are. Axles are out. Now is a really good time to change your little wheel bearings. Mine seem okay, so I'm not, I probably will change them, what the fuck am I talking about? But this is the uh, dual caliper bracket from Duncan Motorsports right here. Um, I got this before I drifted the car, so this is one of the first mods I made. Um, so yeah, then that answers my question about the axle before, because this went on this axle, so yeah. When I put the axle in is when I uh, converted to dual caliper. Yeah, and a hydro and everything, so. All that's left now is uh, I gotta pull out the carrier. When you're pulling the carrier out, you um, wanna keep the main bearing caps in the same spot that they were, at the same orientation. So what I will do is I'm gonna get a paint marker and I'll put L with an arrow up and then R with an arrow up. That just shows that it's the left and right side and then that arrow points up, clearly. So once you pull these caps off, uh, you'll be able to pull out the entire carrier, but keep the shims um, on the side that they came from and bundle them together because you're gonna have to measure those to see um, how much you have on each side so you know how much to put back to set your backlash and all that stuff, so. Okay, so I got those loose. I'm gonna go grab a paint marker quick. So kind of clean off the best you could. I don't have any uh, brake cleaner right now. I have to go get some, but kind of just clean them off the best that you can so that the paint marker will work. So there's my little up arrow. I mean, it looks like shit. And we'll do an L. L. Arrow. And then an R. I mean, it's not the best, but it shows it's a, it shows left and right, so good enough. So now uh, pull your carrier bolts out. Now is also a really good time to change your clutch packs. I'm not going to because um, I'm welding my differential, so I have no need for that. All right, there's that one. And what I think I'm also gonna do is um, slide the pin back in so that my spider gears don't move on me or fall out. Cause that's not fun, cause then you gotta put it back together. I don't wanna, so gonna like tighten that back in a little bit and just take it out before I put the axles back in. Now that's gonna allow those spider gears to stay in place. Now it might be stuck a little bit. Okay. All right. Now is when you wanna pay attention because now is when your shims are gonna start coming out. So, kind of uh, pay very close attention and go very slowly pulling the carrier out. I was actually able to get one of the shims out, so that'll stay on this side so that I can remove this then. Okay, there we go. Carrier is out. Here are the shims. So this is the left side shim, so they'll go right in there. Keep them separated. Next thing you'd wanna do is to completely clear out your diff. Um, by that I mean get all the oil out of it, get all the fluid out of it, and then you uh, brake clean everything. So these are 355 gears that were in this. Um, not gonna be using them anymore, obviously. I'm switching up to 373. The ring gear is off now. Uh, first things first, gonna clean it. Gonna get some brake cleaner um, and just spray the absolute piss out of this. Um, Literally until it looks, it'll look funny. It will, it'll have like a very dry look to it. That's what you want to achieve, so. Okay, now that is 
extremely clean, completely free of any oil. Uh, so just let it get it out of the puddle that you've created, put it off to the side, some let it dry. Probably something around 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And uh, should be good to go. So I'm ready to weld it. Um, everything's clean. It has it grounded to the actual thing itself, plus it's on a metal table. Um, the first thing you're really gonna do is you're going to weld the corners of the gears together, and then you weld the gears to the case itself. You're know, welding too hot right now, I don't know why. Now what you're looking for here is um, penetration and you can go super, super hot with this. Fill all the corners with as much weld as you can. I've welded that complete. I'm gonna go up to the case on this corner now. Now you can get extremely hot with this. Like I have it on 20 volts. It's only on 110 though. But you can go super, super hot with it. All right, pretty good on this side. Um, now one thing to note, once you do this, that's it. This carrier is no longer good. I've got it all in the corners to the case. So what I'm gonna do now is just go right around and fill the whole thing on this side with weld. The thing I'm gonna do right now is let this cool down a bit, the welder cool down a bit, and uh, we will be good to go to weld the other side. Yeah, so you're looking for like a shit ton of penetration with this. Um, you need to penetrate because the gears need to become one, so. It is really freaking hot, but it's all welded, so I gotta go around the case a couple more times, I think some little spots and it should be okay. All right, we are all good there and welded now. I would like to do a couple, couple more spots here. Okay, so it is all welded up. It's really hot though, really hot. It's welded on both sides. Now I just got to uh, wait for it to cool down and then I need to get a crush sleeve for the Opinion. But once I do that, I can put it back together and it'll be all done. Well, that's all there really is to it. Basically, all you're doing is welding the spider gears together and then welding them to the case. And that just creates one solid object, which will just spin both wheels at the same time. It's super easy. You just gotta weld it really hot. You gotta use gas. I've done it with flux and all it did was break. So um, use gas, use really high voltage, really hot welds and just Fill it. Doesn't have to look pretty, but it's got to hold. This will allow you to have more consistent drifts because you don't have to worry about the posi unlocking on you and then you straightening up or hitting a wall or something like that. It will stay locked and both wheels will spin the same speed all the time. Well, I hope this helped you out if you were wondering how to weld a diff. If not, hope you liked the video. It's a super easy way to get consistent drifting, consistent launches at the drag strip. You know what I mean? It's just. If you need your wheels to spin the same speed all the time, if they always need to be locked, weld it, super easy. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.